Wow, here in Venezuela at last. You know, sometimes I used to wonder why or how do you know what God has in mind for you? How do you know what your mission in life is? I know that's a, a question that many other young people my age wonder and want to know. Ever since I was a little child, I always thought, you know, hey, it would be real cool to be like a mission pilot someday, you know, maybe be like David Gates or, or Richard Gates, you know, his father, or, or some other great, you know, in my mind, a hero, a hero for Christ, you know, one of those, those that take the initiati initiative and lay all on the line. Well, time passed and never really knew what where life was taking me, where God was taking me. He sent me to one academy and then to another and the whole time I was like, oh Lord, where, why are you taking me here? What, this isn't really what I want to do. I never knew at that time that, that those years were the key training point to life of mission work. When you are in the mission field, you have to be flexible. You have to be able to Follow wherever there is need. In fact, many times I think that's how God uh, will guide us. He says, there is a need, and go meet it. You may not always know how you're going to meet it, but He wants us to take the initiative. He wants us to step forward. I hear David talking about that a lot, and I, I'm just, wow, you know, can, can God really do that for me too? Well, after I graduated from academy, I was like, well, Lord, now where do you want me? He said, well, you've always wanted to do flying, right? Well, Lord, I don't know where, well, how in the world are you going to train me to do flying? I don't have a penny. I don't, I don't have the contacts. I don't have anything. Well, God had a, a lot bigger story in mind. Um, he took me to a place in Maine, out of all places, a little town by the name of Frenchville, real tiny, secluded in the middle of nowhere. And that's where God chose to train me. I spent a lot of time in the C-172, and over the years, or, well, over these last few months, actually, God has trained, has been training to be able to actually fly and start living these, well, what I always thought was a dream from since I was real little. Okay, cut. You know the reason for me to be here. Please pray that you would, I'm praying that you would please send your spirit to guide. Speak through me. Let these be your words, not mine. Pray this would be to your honor and glory. Two, one. All right. Well, God had some crazy plans in mind. I mean, after the time in Maine, after the training there, he, while, uh, cut, uh, no, okay, while, no, l leave a little, a few seconds, I'll yeah, pause yeah, while in Maine, God used some training techniques that I had never dreamed of before, he brought in just the people I needed, just when I needed it, just when I needed them. He brought in just the resources, just when I needed them. You know, it's always up to God. He always tends to do that, right when we're not expecting it at all. The way it happened this time was I had my flight training to finish. I only had like a week left until I was leaving for home. It's like, Lord, this is this is impossible. I have so many hours of flight time I need to get in. I have to take my written test. I need to take my check ride. These are all things that take a lot of time and effort for me, let alone the flight time itself. I said, well, Lord, you, you can provide. You can make it happen. But Lord, there's there's one more thing that, that's really, wow, I don't know how you're going to meet this one, Lord. Lord, I am missing $900. I don't have the money, kind, that kind of money to finish up that kind of training. And I spent some time praying. <laughs> I, like, I was out splitting wood and 
praying and God came or I just could like feel his presence and he was saying you know Daniel just go ahead I was like but Lord I don't have the resources you know if I don't if I don't finish here if I don't get the things done that I need to I'm not going to be able to finish I don't have that kind of money and if I go ahead and the money doesn't come in I'll be stuck here forever or so it seemed well next morning got up and I said, okay, Lord, I'll, I'll do what you ask. And I spent the day flying, and it was a very good day flying. Uh, the weather was, was not so good, but anyway, that's beside the point. At the end of the day, I got home, and I was by the fire and praying, Lord, I've stepped out in faith. Now, if it's your will, please, please be there for me. And he was. What does one? While I was in Maine, a very interesting uh, thing happened. God decided to test me in a way that I'd never known before. He gave me an opportunity to trust Him. He, <laughs> he has some very interesting ways of getting us to trust Him. Usually it's ways that we didn't expect or, or don't understand. Um, I was out. He got me into this what I what we tend to call situations but I had 10 hours of flight training to do rats three two one the situation was really quite simple I had 10 hours of flight training to do my written test and my check right to take I had just about a week and on top of that I didn't even have the money it took I was missing $900 to be able to finish that up. The situation was simple. I only had like just about a week left of uh, time in Maine. And I had to finish up like 10 hours of flight training, my written test, and my, uh, my test, my flight test. And on top of that, I didn't even have the money to finish. So I was like, Lord... What are you trying to say here? You know, is am I here right now just because of like my own stubbornness? You know, I've always wanted to be a pilot. So is this is me being here, you know, something that I just pulled out of thin air because that's what I want to do with my life? Or I was praying, Lord, is this something that you want me to do? Is this of you, Lord? I spent some time praying about that and I was out splitting wood. <laughs> while I was praying and I just felt like the Lord was there and he was saying, Lord, I'm here. For, are you saying, Daniel, I'm here for you. I was just like, wow. No, Lord, you know, I've, I was telling him, you know, Lord, you know, I want to serve you. You know, I want to work for you. But how do you want me to work for you? That is something that I find a lot of other youth my age asking, you know, just like, why, you know, how they, we want to work for you, Lord, but where do you want us? Why do you want us there? And when do you want us there? How are you going to prepare us to be there? These are all questions I was asking at that time. And the decision had to be made right then. I either had to start flying and continue flying and risk everything or I should stop and just save it for another time. The next day, I was just like, Lord, you didn't bring me this far just to shut me down. You didn't bring me this far. You know, it's just like you didn't take the Israelites halfway across the Red Sea just to close the water in on them. I believe firmly that God had brought me to that point and that he wanted me to continue. I spent the day flying, and that night when I got home, I wasn't at ease, really. I was just still praying about it. It's like, Lord, what, you know, I'm in debt now. I don't have the resources to pay for this. And if it's not paid by the time it's time for me to leave, I can't leave. And Lord, you know the other, you you know your plans for me. What is in your plans? While I was praying, <laughs> the phone rang. God always has that little sense of humor. And it's my father on the other end. And he said, you know, a little piece of paper came in. And it said $1,000 on it. I was just like, whoa. 
you know, I couldn't say anything else but whoa for like, like, I don't know how long. That's just like in awe. You know, after tithe, then that leaves exactly the $900 that are taken. I spent the rest of the week training, really, really training. And the weather wasn't always perfect, but as God led, you know, I was able to fly. And it came into being so close. I f barely finished up. Um, I was leaving on a Tuesday morning. I took my flight test on Monday morning. I finished my flight exam, the actual flight uh, test, as the sun was going down. And then I left it for the next morning. God could not have timed it any better. And it was just like clearly as could be. It's like, wow, you know, God actually is the one in charge here. And many times, you know, that was, that was the way that God, God communicated to me. But how does he communicate with other people? That is, you know, I get a lot of people saying, wow, well, how, how in the world are we going to know whether or not, you know, we're supposed to start on something? There's an excellent analogy that I've heard. It's about a ship. You cannot steer a ship if it's not moving. I seem to find that it's the same with God. You need to take action before he can steer you before he can direct you in the way you need to go. Find someone that has a need and just go and meet it. As you meet those needs, God will continue to train you to the purpose he has for you. You may have a lot of talents or you may have a few, but whatever you do have, it is essential that you use them immediately for God's work. Okay. Well, you guys just saw a little bit of like my history, a little bit of my testimony, I guess you would call it. Um, it's really neat being here. I think every time that you start out in a new place, you come across a lot of unexpected things. You come across a new culture, you come across a lot of new people, new places, new environment, new foods. I mean, Everything is just so different from, from what you always expected or thought that you would come across. <laughs> I've been working down here uh, with, with AMA, Adventist Medical Aviation, or also known in Spanish as Aviacion, Aviacion Medica Adventista. And it's been really neat. I've been working, to, or Bob, Bob Norton here has been training me a lot. He has so much wealth of knowledge. I mean, it just knows so much. And it's been really cool. Um, he has a lot of the same learning techniques that I've always wanted to learn. So that's been a huge blessing. Um, another thing that's going on down here right now is that the International Rescue and Relief Program has been having uh, their first course down here. And they've actually been able to have me sit in on a lot of their classes um, that they're teaching down here to the students. And it's been a, a real, real blessing, not only to me, but to them as well. Um, it's been a blessing to me because obviously they've been teaching me, um, you know, swift water rescue. We had a class in that the other day. A lot of uh, uh, travel medicine, jungle medicine, natural remedies. Those are things that I've just been learning here. I've also been learning a lot about how to translate. And that's where I've been able to help them out. They needed someone to be able to translate, you know, obviously from Spanish to English, so that the, the doctors can do their work, of course. <laughs> of course, it gets a little tricky sometimes because the Indians out here speak their own dialect. So we end up having two translators, one to translate from Spanish to English, and then one to translate from Spanish to Pemon, the local dialect. So it makes life really interesting. Um, it was really awesome. We just got back from a trip to several different villages. Bob flew us in uh, into a little village by the name of Awarauka, a little place out in the middle of nowhere. It was really neat. We, in like just over four hours, I would say, we saw a ton of patients, like 80, 80 plus patients. They all needed help. And they all just, you could just see that, that they, they were missing a lot. They 
have a lot to learn as well. They need to have someone come. They need someone to come teach them. They need someone to come and work with them. We were only able to stay, but like one night there, we, we didn't get to stay very long. The next day we took off, well, actually we went by boat this time, several hours up the river, at a little village by the name of Aripichi. It's a very cool little place out in the middle of nowhere. Beautiful uh, jungle, waterfalls. Of course, we had to go up through some rapids and whatnot to get to it, but it was really nice. We had a lot of fun there. It was a lot of work too, though. It's just, it's, everything is so different. When we got back, we discovered that many of the places we had been to, we needed to talk to more. We need to go back to those places. It's just something, just getting started. The real mission will be here in the years to come. Um, IRR is actually planning on coming back next year with the larger group, with more, more EMTs, more students, and Bob Norton flying in. So anyway, that sort of gives you an idea of, of some of the things that have been going on out here. Um, you know, it may not be the most exciting documentary or video or whatever you've ever seen, but at least it'll give you guys a glimpse, an idea of what is going on down here, what the area is like, and just a little glimpse into, yeah, here, <laughs> I don't know what to say. You can end. Ah, oh, you're terrible. <laughs>